I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Today is Friday, praise God. And I know something, all week we've been talking about being a witness for Jesus. And I've been sharing different aspects with you and, and the purpose of this is that you will not just um, hear but understand and begin to function as a witness, praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? And hey, remember, we are calling daily bread that will last us till Monday. So release your faith with me now in agreement as we declare. Say, Father, I declare right now, as I demand for my daily bread, it is given to me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I lack nothing because I receive all things from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. When we say these things, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Praise God. That's what Jesus said. Now then, we've been talking about being a witness. Yesterday I was sharing with you about the, the branch and how how we produce fruits and the fruit we produce is the fruit of love that is the fruit we produce so people look at our lives and they see that god loves us now with the same love see if you don't understand how much god loves you if you don't see the evidence of his love in your life you will be deficient in the kind of love that you give you cannot love anyone above the way you love yourself. You can't. If you don't have that love in you, you cannot give it out. And being a witness of Jesus is simply giving out that love. First and foremost, your life becomes a proof. You see, we concentrate, and, and I'm trying, and I'm trying to um, do this on purpose to shift your mind. Because if, you, if, you, if you've been following this broadcast for long, you would have realized that I'm always dealing with you as a person. I'm not dealing with the ministry. I'm not dealing with the church. I'm dealing with you as a person and your relationship with the Lord. So when Jesus said, be a witness, we're not talking about a movement, a church movement, or we're going out for evangelism. We're, no, that's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about you. You watching me right now. Jesus wants you to be a witness of him. So I'm not talking about holding crusades, holding programs, and go display the power of God. That's not what we are talking about. Our focus here, here is you in your life, in your home, at work. Are you a witness for Jesus? Not just carrying Bible. No, no, no. Do people see in your life that everything Jesus has said is true? The kind of life you live is what's going to generate that kind of testimony. That's the truth. These things don't happen by chance. Now, I know Maybe in church, when they call for testimonies, oh, people queue up and they say, praise God, I didn't have a car, but last week, God blessed me with a car, church celebrates with me, oh, oh, I didn't have a job, now I have a job, oh. Now, those things are not testimonies. They are just good things that people are declaring that have happened in their life. It doesn't mean that they are testimonies. I need you to understand that. Getting a car, someone buying a car may not be a testimony. It may be a testimony, see? But it's not everybody that gets a car that is a testimony. That's the truth. So the testimony is usually in how did that car come? That's where we find the testimony. So one person saves money for three years, and then he is able with that savings to buy a car. Whoa, I've been able to buy a car. Well done. But that's not a testimony of Jesus. 
No, it's not. Eh, but there is no God that helped the person to say, it's not a testimony of Jesus. That, the purchasing of that car did not testify that what Jesus said is true. Actually, that's, that story is anti-Jesus testimony. I want you to listen hard. Jesus said, take no thought for your life. So, if you have spent three years saving up money to buy a car, now, it means for three years, you were taking thought about how to get a car. And you were working at it. So that's hard work. I want you to understand something. And, and sometimes preachers make this mistake. And, and, and that's why when you listen to preachers, it's, it's important you know who, is, who are they talking to. Are they talking to me as a child of God? Or are they speaking to the people of the world? If they are talking to you as a child of God, there is, there is a culture. There is a way we speak. There is a way we operate in our culture. And, and no one should say, so sometimes people, I, I hear, you know, sometimes people say God does, not, God does not bless with material things. They don't know what they are talking about. Believe me, they don't. They don't know God. Oh, no, 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 they don't. They don't know him. So the one who just comes out to say, oh, I've, 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 I've been able to walk. Why I have three streams of income and... By, by because of those three streams of income, I was able to purchase a car. Good story. But that's the kind of story the people of the world share. Not the people of the kingdom. It is not that testimony or that story is not witnessing the person of Jesus. See that now? The Jesus, whom have, Jesus who told us, take no thoughts. For your life. Okay, so what do I do? He said, all these things shall be added to you. When you seek the kingdom and his righteousness. So now, I'm concerned about how does God want me to get a car? I'm concerned about it, about that. And I begin to, 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 to receive the mind of God concerning him in the place of prayer and in the place of faith. Now, when I mean faith, I'm, I'm setting my heart up to hear from the Lord, to receive from the Lord. Now, you cannot do that if you have not received or if you have not walked in that personal relationship with Him. Ah, La Kabaya. I want to show you something in... I want to show you something in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 32. Now, now this, is, this is the challenge with a lot of believers. Genesis chapter 32, verse 9. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. This is Jacob speaking here. Now, this was when Jacob was going to meet Esau. I want you to see something here that will help enlighten your mind. So, verse 9, I said, watch this now. Then Jacob said, who's talking? Jacob. He said, then Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father, Isaac. Take note. Then he said, The Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your family, and I will deal well with you. Now, now you, you, I know you've read this thing before, but there's something I want to pull out of. He <laughs> he, he recognized God as the God of Abraham. Yeah. Now, when he was calling on the God of Abraham, remember his life was at risk right now. He is about to face a, maybe in his mind, life or death situation. Right? Okay. 
because he doesn't know. At that moment, he didn't know what Esau was going to do to him. But now he had heard from the Lord saying to him, go back to your, to your city, go back to your country. He has heard from the Lord. Now he is here just about to meet Esau. And so he said, look, let me pray. And so he went, oh God of my father Abraham, the God of my father Isaac. Then the most important part was when he said, the Lord who said to me. Oh, if you miss this part, you risk, you risk failing in life eventually when, when it comes to God. He said, the God who said to me. That was when he brought this prayer personal. So God has done it in Abraham. God has done it in Isaac. The same God said to me. Now you see that? I told you, you can't be a witness to someone you have never encountered. You can't be a witness to someone you don't know. Now when you read that prayer, what even happened afterwards? It was an honest prayer. But then he emphasized that I'm going on this journey because you said to me, brothers and sisters, what have God said to you? You see, our life is supposed to be a witness of what he has said. Our life is supposed to be the witness that everything written in scriptures, it's true. Jesus, I read that scripture last week to you. Jesus said, you search the scriptures because in them you think you have eternal life. And the scriptures testify of me. But he didn't stop there. He said, and you will not come to me so that you will have life. The scriptures testify of Jesus. Meaning when Jesus showed up, everything written in scriptures came alive as truth. It didn't end with Jesus, brothers and sisters. We are here today. Our lives is supposed to show that what the script, we do Aikumashia. We don't live our life to conform to scriptures. No, sir. If you live that way, you are living the wrong way. No, sir. <laughs> We live our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then the scriptures come alive in us. So what's different? There's a big difference. There's a big difference. Now this is why you see, I'm telling the truth. This is why you find out that there is so much hypocrisy in Christendom. As people think. But you see, my thoughts are different. My thoughts are, it's not everybody you see in church that is a Christian. True, true, true. Real believers in Jesus, they are different. And this is where the difference is. They live by the power of the Holy Spirit. They do not live their lives to conform to scriptures. You can't even live your life to conform to scriptures. You can't. You will be a hypocrite. You will be because the power will be denied. You, 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 you will be denying the power, number one. Number two, you, you will not expose yourself to the workings of that power. That's why even someone who has never read the scriptures can still live a perfect Christian life. Yes, someone who's an illiterate, someone who... Who, who has maybe cannot speak English and have not read or the Bible have not been translated in their language, but who has had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Thank God the Holy Spirit does not speak English. Praise God. Yes, people hear God that don't speak English. People hear God that have never been to church before. And when I say hear God, I'm not just talking about my soul, rise up, 
and do. No, that's, that's wonderful. But I'm talking about the day-to-day -day instruction that we, because the Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. If that is true, brothers and sisters, you wake up in the morning, he's the first voice you're going to hear. You are stepping out, he's talking to you. You are driving, he's talking to you. I'm telling you, everything about your life is word, 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 word. I'm not saying memorizing scriptures and quoting the scripture. No, now I know sometimes he tells you scriptures. That's when you know scriptures. Now, even if you don't know scriptures, he can tell you something. And when you say it, someone said, that's a scripture you just quoted there. Oh, yeah, but you see, now you, you quoted that scripture by the power of the Spirit of God. And I've, I've never read it before. So how did you know it? It just came to my heart. Oh, are you sure you've never? No, I've never read it before. Oh, you've not met, you've not met believers. Calibo Sopra These are believers who are living by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying they, they, they are praying for 10 hours. I'm not saying they are, they are healing the sick and doing miraculous things. They will do. But I'm talking about people you meet whose ideas, whose thoughts, whose way of seeing things are through the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, you, you need to hang around such people. They, 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 you know, you're talking, oh, man, I, in two months' time, I'll be needing money to purchase those and such things. Like, okay, um, have you asked God about it? <laughs> um, um, yeah, you know, we, we have to walk. Uh -huh. Nothing, a man can receive nothing except it be given to him from above. Yeah, but you know, we have to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get this contract, time to get this job. If I get that job, then I'll be able to afford that thing. No, 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 no. Have you asked your father for it? I mean, if you've not asked, let's, let's, let's agree and ask God. Yeah, but, but how will God do it now? You see the problem? You see the problem? How will God do How You're like Moses in the wilderness, praise God. And the children of Israel asked him, Moses, we want meat. And Moses said, what is wrong with you guys? You guys are just, I mean, come on. What is wrong? Moses, we want meat. Ah, all right. He went before the Lord, which was the right thing to do. God, can you imagine these people? They are so stubborn. I said, what's the matter, Moses? They said they want meat. And God said, uh -huh. give them meat. God said, Lord, you know what you're talking about. Do you, where are you going to get meat? God said, Moses, do you know who you're talking to? Brothers and sisters, God didn't give anybody hunter's gun to go hunt for meat. God, God didn't lead them into one forest where they see bush meat and, and animals and then they began to hunt right in the wilderness where they were. God, by Kodisha, God, the Bible says a wind blew, an east wind blew, uh, and it blew quails from the sea. Ay, uh, that day, that's so pretty. <laughs> and it, it came to their camp in heaps. How do you explain that? Now that's Jesus. That is the testimony of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, believe God. And don't hang around people who don't believe him. Don't hang around people who are, who are swimming in unbelief. Because they tried something, it didn't work. Now they begin to preach and say those things don't work. If you want money, you better go look for money. God does not give money. Keep quiet. God gives money. Okay, how is he going to give money? Is he going to... Throw money from heaven. Is that your problem? No. Is that your problem? A fish brought money to Jesus. Where did the fish get it from? Has it happened before? Yes, it has. Can it happen again? Yes, it can. Your problem is not where he's going to get money from. Your problem is unbelief. You don't believe him. And how will you be a witness if you don't believe him? Everything Jesus has said, our life is supposed to testify that his words are true. That's how to be a witness. And my time is up. Praise <laughs> God. I pray for you. Mm. That the Spirit of God will arrest you indeed today. 
I pray that he will take your life and fill you with his strength and power. And from today, you will begin to live like a Christian, bearing precious fruits that the world will see and recognize his love in your life. And by that love and recognition, they will be drawn to the Christ that is in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Have the best weekend ever. God bless you. Bye.